Will this little box of tricks have the cycling purists wanting to lynch its creator? Or will the Voluminate be reaching for their pitchforks? Pitchforks! Can't be an angry mob without pitchforks! The Psych Plus Mini Pump. Can this really replace your CO2? Or even worse, are we looking at the death of the mini pump? Well, let's give it a try and find out. This is the Tiny Pump Cube, a handheld compressor manufactured by Psych Plus, a company that's been on the go for about 10 years. They specialize in cycling electronics. For example, they make smart turbo trainers, head unit cycling computers, heart rate monitors, and pumps. And that's where this comes in. So let's look at its stats. Charge time, 20 minutes. Weight, 97 grams. Maximum pressure capacity, 100 PSI. And apparently it will pump up one 25 road tire up to 100 PSI and two 32 tires up to 60 PSI. It will connect to either Presta or Schrader valves. Comes with this little silicon boot to protect both it and you because apparently it can generate quite a bit of heat. Charges via USB-C and has a little indicator on the top to show you the charge level. So my channel leans towards road and gravel and the vast majority of the wheels I've got kicking around the workshop are the more modern hookless rims. Not dissimilar to what is sold on the average modern bike today. However, I've done some digging behind the bench and I've found a set of old hooked fulcrum wheels and some old clincher tires. Put a track pump on that, easily takes 140 PSI. This little gadget claims it can get up to 100 PSI, so we will attach this on there and see how far it can get before it splutters and conks out. Could be interesting. Well, we'll start off with something nice and easy, a 25C road tire, and we'll pump it up to 60 PSI. See how many times it can do that until the battery dies and then we'll recharge it and give it something a bit trickier to do. We'll give it a gravel tire 35C and see how many times it can pump that up to, shall we say, 50 PSI in that. That's the going rate, would you say? But then we'll give it something really hard to do. This old clincher with this old thick rubber boot on it that can take, this will take 140 PSI, I've tested it. Let's stick it on there, leave it on there, and see how far it gets before it conks out. I've been measuring all the results using my Topeak digital gauge. Fantastic little workshop tool that. And they're not as much money as you think they would be. Link in the description below. First test, 25C tire on a hookless rim. Just 60 PSI, so a nice easy one to be starting with. Press the little button, green light. Means we've got full battery charge. Fifty-eight psi. You know what? That's near as damn it. It'll do. Right. Okay. So let's let the air out and try it again. PSI. So, first test, two lots of 60 PSI into a 25C tyre, pass. Oh, and battery level, orange still. Right, let's stick it on charge, fill it back up, and we'll try a 35. Waiting for it to charge. Maybe I'll put my screwdrivers in alphabetical order. Now, if you're finding this content useful, do me a huge favour and hit that like button. And if bike maintenance is your thing, then why not hit the subscribe and the bell icon, and then you'll get notified every time I upload a video. Right, let's pump this tyre up. 
14 minutes it took to charge that's not bad is it right okay tire number two so this one we're only pumping up to 50 psi however it's a size 35 tire so it's going to need to move a lot more air and do a lot more work That's got to be close. Oh, orange light. Let's give it a go. Oh, 41. See, it's taking a lot more pumping up. There's a lot more air to move. That's got to be 50 by now. Let's have a look. 49, I'll take that. 49's near enough 50, isn't it? Right, let's let the air out and do it again. See if it can do a second one. Well, I'm not sure it's going to do it. Whoa, red. So, less than 20% left. Let's see what we've got to. Bang on, 50 PSI. Look at this. Mud all over me bench. Dirty, horrible gravel bike tires. Let me see. Right, the big test. Now I tried this with the trusty track pump and this easily takes 120, 130 PSI. So, will the tiny little cube pump get this up to 100 psi now i'm going to stick my neck out and say i think it will and i think the trick to making it doing it is don't stop don't take the pressure off keep going right let's give it a go Getting, it's getting dodgy, it's rock hard. Do I dare be so close to this? I think for safety reasons, I'm gonna leave that there. That's getting warm. And this tire is rock hard. Right, <clears throat> how did it do? hundred and seven psi not bad let's just clear it down and check it again 105 psi which is understandable a bit of pressure from testing it so there you go it can make a hundred psi oh on the battery level red unsurprisingly really <laughs> So the question I set out to answer, is the Cyc Plus Cube pump any good? Yes, it is. It is brilliant. It does exactly what it claims. From now on, this will go on every bike ride I go on. I think it's brilliant. Now, if you're in the market for one of these, there's two places you can get them. You can either get them directly from Cyc Plus themselves or you can get them from their Amazon page. I've put a link in the description below to both two directly to their website and to their Amazon page. Currently, when I'm making this video, it's a little bit cheaper directly on their website, but I'll put you both links down below so you can check both and get the best price on them. But the other question I set out to answer was, is it as good or a replacement for CO2 or the trusted mini pump? So in my personal opinion, I think the Site Plus beats CO2 hands down. Every time you use CO2, you spend a pound, dollar, euro or something on one of these. Depending on how much money you want to throw at CO2, it can be a little bit wayward at times. This is a cheap and cheerful one that's not very good and this can be a bit 
hit and miss, all or nothing. Connect it up, fire it, and it's bang, it dumps everything. And then it's just left on the side, hissing away to itself when it empties its guts. This one is a little bit better. One like this, it's gonna cost you about 25 or 30 pounds, but at least this one, you can control it a bit rather than the all or nothing from the cheaper versions. You need to remember to reorder CO2. USB, you don't need to really reorder that, do you? And the other thing, how green are these things? How much impact does it have on the environment producing these little canisters that we're all using as a one hit thing and then hopefully chucking in the recycling? From what I can see, there is only one advantage that CO2 has over the little mini cube pump and that is cost. You would need, to, I've done some basic maths on it, you would need to get probably about 30, 35 punctures before this technology worked out cheaper than this technology. But is the new kid on the block better than our old trusted friend, the mini pump? Well, technically, yeah, sort of. It's a lot easier. It's a lot quicker. Trust me, I've tried it. This goes a lot quicker than this does. It's smaller, it's lighter, and some mini pumps will never achieve the 100 PSI that this achieved. However, you could get five punctures a day and your old friend, the traditional mini pump, would work over and over and over without being plugged into a USB port. I suppose it's a bit like the argument of mechanical shifting versus electronic shifting. Is that argument still going on? You want to find out? Check that video up there. It probably is still going on. Or alternatively, if you don't want to get involved in that and you just want to watch me wash some bike parts, Check that video down there. Thanks for watching.